So I just want to say before I get started that I've never tried making one of Luna Lappin's friends completely out of felt. Um, it does seem like a decent quality thickness of felt, like I think it'll be okay that way, but I've never actually tried sewing stuffing that I plan to stuff like that with felt. So with no further ado, here goes. Let's see how we do. Hey YouTube, welcome back. So the continuation of Freddy the Badger. So what I have here, I have the book with it opened up to the directions and I will I have all the stuff cut out here I'll show you in just a sec and here you can see all the pieces are cut out and ready to begin assembly using this pattern clip you can clip the notches on the pattern pieces so that you can easily mark the fabric just like a hole punch simply put it in there everywhere that you've marked off a notch and simply clip that notch now using a fabric pen, you can go in and simply color in the notch areas and your markings will be in place. See, here's mine done now. Next thing we need to do is add Freddy's markers for the lines that we're gonna put on his face. Using the pin method that I've shown you before, press the pin all the way through the pattern piece and then using your fabric pen, mark the points just on either side of the pin, just like so. This way, when you take the piece of paper off, as you can see, all the dots are in place. Next, we're going to attach Freddy's face pieces. With the piece laid out flat, you're going to attach the jaw pieces along the outer edges as shown. Simply match up the way the pieces are cut with the white piece. You can see an obvious direction in which it should go. Then using the markings that you made with your pen, carefully line everything up as straight and even as possible and pin into place. And now this is ready to be sewn. When threading your machine, always make sure you check which way the bobbin should go according to the make of your machine. I have two machines that the bobbin loads a different way for each one, so always double check that. Next, I chose an applique stitch for attaching the parts for Freddy's face. Stitch Freddy's face pieces down using an applique stitch or a zigzag stitch, trying to make things as even and smooth as possible. Now that Freddy's side jaw pieces are attached, we're going to attach the middle stripes. Here's a diagram in the book for the directions that gives you an idea of how this is supposed to go. The curvy pieces of these stripes go towards the outer side of the face and the straighter pieces go up the middle. Simply put these into place, carefully matching those dots that you made and pin everything into place to get it ready to sew. Now that you have everything sewn and uh, pinned into place, you're going to sew this into place. So using your decorative top stitch or applique stitch again, run the seams carefully along the edges, trying to keep everything as straight as possible and attach these stripes onto the face. Repeat the stitching down the other side of the other stripe as well. Once you're satisfied with the position of these, you can see that what I did next was I trimmed off just the slightest amount to straighten out what was there to make it look as even as possible. 
I'm basically satisfied with those inner stitches, so now I'm running the stitches along the outer side of the face stripes next. Now that you've sewn the stripes on both sides, trim off any excess threads that you see around and if you see anything else that needs trimming or straightening out, even the slightest bit, this is the time to do that. Once you're satisfied with the positioning that you think everything is as straight as you can make it, you're just going to run your finishing seam along the ends of these stripes as well. And then here you can see more housekeeping, trim off the excess um, fabric that's at the end. You want this to be as neat and straight as possible. And here you can see both the front and back. Um, it's going to shape up into a head very nicely. I try my best to put my pattern pieces away as soon as I've used them so that then the next time I go to do the pattern, I can find what I want with ease. Something I did forget to show you at the start was the start of the directions do show you to work on the ears for Freddie. Pinning the ears together, you're going to stitch that quarter inch seam all the way around each ear. Once you have the ears sewn like this, you're actually going to sew a small dart into the black side of the ear. The dart should be approximately one centimeter long and maybe a half a centimeter in its width or how much it impacts the fabric. Just run those quickly along the machine. Now, as you see, I've got that sewn and I'm trimming my seam allowances down to one eighth of an inch. Trim this on both ears and then turn them right side out. Now that it's turned right side out, the directions do say to work it with your fingers and try and push the white um, felt a little towards the front and just make them a little bit concave. Once you have those ears shaped how you want, it's time to line them up on the face. As you can see here, simply pin them face down on the face and get them ready for sewing on the machine. We're going to machine stitch these down before we attach any part of the head back. Just like this, you can see it's pinned and ready to sew. Now that it's sewn, it's time to actually start building the face shape. Folding this in half, you can see the face shape taking place there. You're going to want to run an edge stitch and then over stitch down the entire snout and neckline of the doll here. You might want to plan if you want for a white thread at the top. To be honest guys, I didn't. I used black thread all the way through. I felt a bit lazy. I thought it's just going to be covered by the nose perhaps, so I didn't bother. But you could if you want to. The next directions say that you should take the um, tip of that nose there and you're going to fold it down towards the chin so that it's going to start to create that flat nose shape that you're looking for on the badger. So what I did here is I threaded my needle and I went from the inside and pushed it as close to the center of the nose as possible when I pulled it out. You could see I just trimmed some of the excess seam allowance there and now I'm bringing that thread down to the chin area where the colored part of the chin or neck starts and you can see I've pulled it into a fold. So now that I have a fold that I'm satisfied with and I've stitched that down, I'm ready to attach a nose. I decided I wanted to use a plastic bear nose. Using the awl from my seam ripper I got for Christmas, thanks mom, I made a hole in the fabric and I began to insert the nose. There is that seam ripper slash awl tool again, thanks mom. Christmas is wonderful, isn't it? You can see I've made a small hole in the felt and I begin trying to work the plastic nose into it and I realize it's not quite big enough. I push it, I stretch it, I get the nose all the way through and it ended up being too crooked to use guys there'll be an explanation coming so I removed it and I stitched the nose closed to try a different approach more coming on that in a minute So we're working on Freddy the Badger here, the tutorial. Um, I do have it a fair ways along. And um, right now, just doing a fix on the nose. So you can see I have a big 
chunk of felt on here right now, which I'm still going to like, I'm gonna bring it together. We're gonna trim it and fold it down, stitch it into place so that we can start to get the effects of a nose. But uh, I did start off with um, one of these, a little plastic. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> right, just a plastic teddy bear nose. And it, you probably know like with the post in the back, once you push it in, if it's wrong, <laughs> you have a hole in your fabric that is stretched to the width of the post. It's a one-way trip. And basically, I did start off putting a plastic nose on Freddy and it was, crooked enough that there was no pass on this. It, like it had to go. So I pulled it back out and I whip stitched the felt closed. And then what I've done is I took a piece of fabric and um, I've just been hand stitching it down all around the edges here. And now the next steps I'm gonna do is uh, fix up that nose and then we're ready to as assemble the rest of him. So next step, so I had a little quick update video there just saying that it's coming along. So here's where we're at with Freddy, right? This is what the inside looks like. We have a side profile right now, ears partway attached. And we're trying to deal with this nose. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're just gonna tilt this down. This here is my foundation stand. <laughs> So I'm just putting that on there so that I can have two free hands, right? So what I'm planning to do is make the nose fold down. So if you were to just fold this wide, like if I was to just fold, close this up like a, like a circle, like that, right? If I was to do that and fold it, let's take a look at what's gonna happen. Sure, it's folded, it's not snowing, but that's a pretty fat, snubby nose, right? So <laughs> I think we can fix that. Here's what we're gonna do, is I'm just taking the nose, holding it in a flat style way like that, as if I'm pinching his nose, and then, so that I'm trying to just pick up on the width here in the white, once I can pinch this fabric up here to make a tighter fold, Let's see if you can see me doing it, I'm just sort of, Pinching and folding it over. Let's see if I can even try a little better light again. Not sure how to show you guys this the best way here. All right, so here we go again. I'm gonna fold it up. I think maybe with the white backdrop is helping here. And I'm just folding this like this and sort of pinching it in. And I'm trying to find my length so that if I'm gonna fold and sew this over like this, I am gonna get a better nose shape out of it. That's obviously really thick right now because it's not been trimmed, right? But that way he's gonna have like little side nostril curls and it's just gonna look more right. So here we go, we're gonna do this. I'm making sure here that I'm gonna have enough fabric to fold up and under by about a quarter of an inch past where this all meets, right? So I'm just making sure if I fold the fabric over, I've got a little bit of, so basically around here, this is about as deep as I want it. So here's what I do. I always go an eighth of an inch more because mistakes in, can be made and it's not something we can exactly measure, right? All right, so here we go. Now we've cut away some of the length. So now if we fold this over, if we were to take this and just, if we need to go under a little and then fold it down, we have more than enough room that way, so that's good. So now the next step that we're gonna do, we have to trim some this way because this, is just far too much to fold over, right? We need to bring this in as if you're, you know, folding it in like that so that you can fold it over, but we still don't want that much bulk. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to take this, and we know this is a little too long, but we're just gonna go gradual with the clips because it's safer. So what I'm going to do here 
is I'm starting here. I'll try and leave this so you can see. See, I'm start. I'm not starting here at the corner, right? I'm starting a little bit above it because I'd rather go back and trim it than cut it wrong the first time and then you're starting over, right? So here we go. We're starting here and we're just gonna bring this on a soft, curved angle. And I'm even gonna let that eighth of an inch at the top go. See that? Right? Okay. So now here's what does Freddie have. This is how I'm ha handling the nose anyways, right? So now it looks like a coffee scoop or a, <laughs> a spout. But anyways, so here he is with um, the excess trimmed off. This should, in theory, be able to fold into place now. Let's see how we do. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm just turning these little parts in, right? Bringing it together like we talked about. And I'm gonna fold this over now. Hang on, I'm gonna fold it over. Try and bring that together a little tighter. And then fold it over. So if I was to tuck this under and stitch all that down into place, what am I gonna get? I'm going to get a little nose like this. And I think he's, his nose is a little squarer than I want, but aside from that, it's not bad. So then what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna start off first. I know I wanna keep this here, so I'm going to actually just sort of stitch this fold down first, okay? So just to keep helping you guys through with the nose because it's tricky and especially once you make a mistake like I do it can shake your confidence about that part of the project and it's the face I want to get it right so anyways all that I did I just stitched that shut right along here and now what I'm experimenting with is when I fold the nose over you see I have technically what we would call like tons of extra fabric and so then I'm like okay well what if I Fold that in and then fold it again. Let me try, let me do that on the camera. So what if I take this, scrunch it up, fold it down, and then fold it down again, right? And so then I looked at that and it's like, well, it's got some good possibilities, but honestly, I think it sticks out too far. I don't think it's quite right. So what I'm gonna do is that same amount that I was ready to fold down, I'm gonna take off only that much because it's still gonna give me a little to tuck under to give the nose some bulk and shape, but not excessive, because right now it's excessive. So you can see how much I'm cutting off here, All right? It's just a little bit. Once again, always, always, always cut tiny because You'd be amazed, like an eighth of an inch, you'll look and go, what difference does it make? It can change everything about how something behaves. So you would be better to go an eighth or a quarter of an inch at a time than just confidently go, whoa, right? So here we go. So anyways, once again, I'm just gonna go, you know, ever so slightly generous on the side of my fingernail. And now we got that, okay? So let's see what happens if we just fold this in right now. I'm gonna get my pop can back here again. And just get this. We're just gonna tuck the ends in a little further, a little tighter if we can. And then we're gonna fold this uh, maybe just a quarter inch or so, and then down. You gotta get it off the pop can now. 
And now you see with my folded tight bit here, once I stitch that, we're gonna have a nose. Okay, so basically I'm going to uh, stitch that down now. When it's time to sew Freddie's nose down, fold that piece of fabric down as you've seen displayed until you're satisfied with the shape, the thickness, the width, and everything of the nose. Don't start sewing much until you are convinced you have that positioned about where you want it. Then you can see from here that I work that nose down to where the black fabric is, call it the chin of Freddie, and I just hand sew that and work it through. I'll just let you watch this stitching get done. Okay, how did you do? So here's my nose on my Freddy. Let me show you as best I can here. So you see there's the underside. What I did was I stitched up and left only the top part open on each side to make a little bit of a, a hint of a nostril. You can see it in some lighting. The fold over creates a bit of a squarish end but you can see that once Freddie's nose, once his face is, whoops, <laughs> once his face is stuffed, he's coming along. And I think that nose is quite acceptable. Don't you agree? All right, okay, so now as per the directions, you're gonna get the back of the hat piece and it'll look like this on its side. And you're basically going to do your overstitching here what I did when I made Luna and what I'm doing with this one, honestly, I keep it so simple. I stitch an eighth of an inch down with a straight stitch and then I just get a basic zigzag stitch. I narrow the width of the stitch and shorten it. I make it smaller and tighter and I just run it along there. And then now this piece is going to get attached to this piece. Here's some footage of me attaching the head. Uh, this is the edge stitching first on the Freddy's head to make sure that the neck won't stretch out of shape. And then you can see me edge stitching the back of the head as well. Now that that stay stitching is in place, I am simply attaching the front and back parts of the head together. You can see the edge stitching all the way around and you can see here the stitching where the front and back of the head are attached together. Once you have that completed, everyone trim your threads again, good housekeeping, keep your threads at bay, and then turn this right side out. And there we have a Freddy head, doesn't he look good? Now it's time to stuff the head. Add the stuffing to the head. When you stuff it, you wanna make sure there's a bit of pushback with your fingers if you give it a squeeze, but you don't want it so hard that it feels like a door stopper, of course. Here's Freddy's head all stuffed. It's got a very nice shape to it, and we're ready for the next steps. Next, it's time to assemble the body. You're going to use your pattern pieces and add the markings on the body, as you can see that I've done here. These are the markings we're going to attach the legs with. Next, you're gonna get the stomach piece and the two back pieces and stitch everything together. You can see here that first I attached the back two pieces, I left a section open for stuffing. I did reinforce these body parts with some interfacing because again, I'm just not sure how strong that felt is, so I wanted to make sure when I was stitching those legs it wasn't gonna be ripping and pulling on everything. So 
that's what I did. And then here you can just see some extra sped up footage just showing me stitching those body pieces and over stitching or edge stitching them as well. And now, just like you did with the head, the body's ready to be stuffed. Stuff that body until it's nice and full, but not too tight. Once you have the body stuffed, you're going to pinch the edge hard and pin this into place to hold your seam allowance as best as you can. And there's my dog in the background. <laughs> Hi, Sky. Once you have this pinned and you're satisfied with it, you're going to run a seam and overstretch that as well. Sorry, guys, I didn't take any footage of that part. Next, you can see the footage for the leg measuring down two and three quarter centimeter. You're going to run the stitch along the back part of the leg first and over the top part of the foot. Once you have that stitch, you're going to do what you see here. You're going to turn the foot inside out so that the stitching is to the inside. And now find your center points of your foot pad and pin that into place as well. Now that they're pinned, they're ready to be sewn. This is super sped up footage, just showing me sewing the feet onto the legs. Here now you can see the stitch seaming has been run and just turn it right side out again. We're still going here, guys. Now that they're turned right side out, the directions say to stuff the feet up to the point where you've sewn. So grabbing some of that stuffing, just stuff the feet only area and the ankle area until you have the stuffing about the consistency that you want. There's one foot done. Now that the feet are stuffed, you're going to use the top pattern piece using that pin method once again push through the pattern and the fabric, then get a marking tool, in this case I'm using the O, to make a hole in the fabric so that I can attach the button. The directions do call for us to make a hole in the fabric and you're gonna push a button with like a shank piece through that's going to be used to attach the legs to the body. Upon doing this, I did start to think the same thing about, gee, I'm gonna to wanna to reinforce these to make sure they're strong enough so once I had the buttons in place and I secured it with the safety pin, then I went and I reinforced these pieces as well. Actually, I did it after it was sewn, but I'll explain. You can see here that I am sewing um, down the seams and then I'm running the overstitching or zigzagging as well. Once they're actually assembled, then you're gonna pin those seams closed. Look at the pressure I'm using with my fingers here. You can see that I do quite try hard to keep the stuffing where it needs to be and run that seam as well. It is a little bit challenging to sew this part, but it's so worth it for the strength and stability it has knowing that you closed it with machine stitching. Now here you can see that reinforcement that I was talking about. Hey YouTube, okay, so we're moving along here on Freddy the Badger. And so here we have the body, right? And we have some legs. Now I just wanna show you on the legs here, what happened is, so we have the legs here and they're assembled according to directions. And as per the directions, I installed buttons with shanks, you see that? right buttons with shanks um, and I installed them on the inside of the leg as described and we've got the shank hanging out with the safety pin holding it in place problem is this is dollar store felt <laughs> and I don't know if I actually went to my local fabric land which I think is the equivalent to a Sally fabric store in the States or wherever your you know whatever your big box fabric store is I don't know if the felt I could find there would be better or not. It's really tough to say. But what I can tell you is I could see the felt on this was already stretching and opening and it was going to push right through. I mean, the button on the other side isn't that big, right? So what I did 
I don't have any black fusible facing, so I literally, I did this. I'm thinking before I totally sew it all together, I'm going to just give it a little color with a marker to darken it. It's the best I can do, right? In addition to that, what I've done here is um, using the marking on the pattern. So you see the little marking there? So I did sort of measure, it's approximately three quarters of an inch away from this uh, side seam here on each side. So you see that's the back, right? And, uh, ooh, one of those is ever so slightly higher than the other, isn't it? Let's fix that. And then we'll move it over as well. There, so I'm gonna remeasure it, but you see I've got the leg socket markings on each side. And so now what we're going to do is this is all going to get sewn together like so. We're going to attach a leg. We're going to attach a leg. And let me just show you the picture for the diagram. So you see on the diagram they're showing that you're going to stitch through the layers and back and forth until you have it through at least twice. So what I had also for elasticized thread, what I had handy, I had bought this is stretchy um, for making masks for you know <laughs> the world events right um, we avoid certain words because I don't want algorithms to pick up certain things so yeah anyways just to be safe but anyways I have this elastic and this is what I'm gonna use and then I have this package of heavy duty noodles noodles <laughs> I also have this package of heavy duty noodle <laughs> I also have <laughs> noodles <laughs> too many times <laughs> now I have the giggles a few moments later I also have this package of heavy-duty household needles and the one that I like the looks of the best in here in terms of the length that it can offer plus that it has a little bit of sharpness to it is this one here that says book binding um, it says book binding and sale making needle. This little guy right here. So if you want to know how long the needle is, let's measure it just in case you're trying to duplicate. It's not quite, but it's almost two and a half inches. Almost, right? But in any event, what we do know is that this is going to be able to, with some compression, we're gonna be able to squeeze that needle through and do what we need to do. So next, we're gonna attach the leg. So uh, despite whatever needle I showed you before, this is what we're using. It's a sock darning needle. I will again show you the length of the needle here. It's about three inches, almost, almost three inches. It's the only one with the eye of a needle big enough that I could actually get this elasticized thread through. And so now we are going to sew the legs onto Freddy. I measured out a length of the elastic thread and I got a very thick darning needle as you could see and I stitched it through. Okay, so now we have the body made and the legs attached, right? And so far, so good. So the next thing we need to do is attach the head and the directions 
Honestly, both Freddy and Reynard's directions don't actually describe attaching the head in detail. So I went back to the Luna directions and they do explain. So you're gonna remember that on Freddy's head, we did, do you see my stitching there? We edge stitched the felt so it wouldn't stretch, right? And the directions do say that there's like your cone shaped top of your body and you need to make sure there's enough room in the stuffing for the cone. So honestly, rather than remove stuffing, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of work a little bit of a space with my fingers like this. All right, and then we are gonna work it onto the body like so look how nicely that is fitting on there. See that? Oh my gosh, yes. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna hand stitch that down, going around at least twice. Let's do it. And now you can see what I've done with Freddie here is I safety pinned the head onto the body so that I'm happy that it's like, you know, it looks centered, right? He looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna stitch. Another thing I'll remind you guys is I do use this upholstery thread when attaching the head to the body, just because if there's anything that's gonna have a lot of activity with dressing and undressing the doll, it could be stuff going over the head, and I just want it to be really strong. So even though it's felt, and I don't know how strong this felt is, I'm still gonna use the upholstery thread just like I did for Luna. just wanted to go over again here so I'm almost done sewing on Freddie's head now just some tips okay is um, his like you know this little seam under his chin here it wasn't actually quite centered his head wasn't quite centered look at him shaking his head no he's already alive um, so what I did was as I was stitching I went in like on an angle and pulled back and like basically straightened it out with my stitching. And I'll just say, when you sew this, <laughs> when, <laughs> when you sew this, you, you need to use some good tension. So you'll notice when I'm sewing, I will give stuff a good tension pull. So what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna go in, I go up under the stitch basting line that I made because then you've got that added strength of those sideways, the, the basting line of stitches, right? That uh, stay stitching. And so then I pull it up and then you're just gonna give it a little, just a little double pull like that. And it sort of straightens out. It gives you good tension in your sewing. If you have good tension in your sewing, then your stitches won't be baggy and they're gonna hold into place where you want them to be. And I do find when it comes to attaching the heads on these animals, your stitch tension is important. You've got to give it a firm pull and you got to go around as, mon as much as it takes to position the head exactly as you want. Nothing more than a little bit of patience is going to get you there. For real guys, you can do it. So the next thing we're going to do is stitch the arms. And what we're going to do is just like the picture, the book tells you to use the directions for Luna Lappin for making the arms and attaching them to the body. So just take a look at this picture here. And you can see how the, the stitching is left open at the back of the arm. We're gonna do, do the same thing 
as we did for the legs. Stitch around one eighth of an inch, except for the opening. Zigzag the same all the way around, and then we're gonna stuff it. Let's go. Here we are, Freddy has his arms pinned into place. Do you see this? So as per the directions, what you need to do now, I have two black buttons, which the black buttons are gonna get placed where those pins are. And we're gonna stitch it, pulling it ever so slightly taut, but not changing the shape of the body. And basically the arms are stitched in with the buttons. Let's do that next. And now I did just remember, fusible web facing. Guys, we gotta remember that this felt does push through a little easy and I wanna give the knot in my thread for starters, right? Just the little knot at the end of the thread. I wanna give it something to hang on to. I wanna just add a little stability. So the same as I did for the legs, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take these arms out and I'm just gonna put the fusible facing on it like this one second here right so it's gonna be positioned like that and I'm just gonna press it into place and then I'll put the arms back on and sew them as you can see I'm using one of these long upholstery needles again so I'm just showing you that I'm still using the upholstery thread because it's extra strong and thick I'm going in here from behind like under the arm so that you don't see the knot that I made to start off I have my reinforced arms um, attached here with the buttons on the outside and I'm pinching and pushing through you'll see it again in a second I'm pinching and pushing that needle through while squeezing the body a bit there you go here's a view you can see I kind of squeeze the shoulder and torso area of the doll and I'm just pushing that needle and thread back and forth trying my best to come up and down between a new buttonhole each time so take your time guys, um, don't be afraid to keep going in and out with your needle until you get the needle to go where you want it to go. You will eventually get it and it is worth it because it makes the arms attach nice and secure. Here you go now, here you can see it's starting to take shape and I'll just continue until I'm finished sewing it, voila! I happen to have two wooden buttons for Freddy just like the craft book calls for. And I don't normally have any sort of like wooden plain buttons exactly like the picture, but what happened is I had a pair of gloves that they looked just like the sweater actually, the same kind of um, knit from the same store. <laughs> and uh, the buttons fell off the back of the mittens and here they are now. <laughs> so that's what I'm using for the eyes. Now it's time to sew the tail. First I attached the black part into the white part that is the top or outer part of the tail. I simply went around the edges of this, um, just a little 1 8 of an inch uh, stitch all the way around, and then I went back and finished it with the zigzag stitch or over stitch as the book described doing. And once we have that done, you can see that over stitching in place there. Now I attach the two white pieces of the tail together. You put them wrong sides together so it's already right sides out. Run that 1 8 of an inch edge stitch all the way around it and then go back with your over stitch or zigzag stitch or finishing stitch as well. 
And finally, guys, this is the last part. We are finishing Freddy. I attached a button to the top of the tail to make it easier to attach to the body and just make sure that the stitching looked a little more neat and maybe hidden. So that's why I opted to use a button. The directions didn't call for a button there. That was my personal choice. But as you can see, I'm pinching that back seam on the back and I'm stitching this. I'm so excited, guys. This is it. Freddy is finally coming together. Hey everyone, just one last closing thought here is the evaluation of sewing with felt. I did state at the start of this video that I didn't buy the felt at a fabric store, I did buy it at a dollar store. So I don't know if that's a factor or not, but I would say for future projects, um, I don't know if felt is my favorite choice. Um, I did find it stretched and I had to reinforce it in places and it accumulates a lot of fuzz really quickly. So just my personal vote, um, other animals that I'm gonna make going forward, hopefully I can find some other fabrics to use and I'll be sure to outline to you what those fabrics are. Thanks for watching guys. Nudity. <laughs> <laughs>